and welcome to Point Blank with Danielle. Now, one of the first things that you need to know about hyperpigmentation, you gotta slow down. Now I know sometimes you see these videos here on this platform where someone had, you know, really aggressive hyperpigmentation and then they have as their after picture this gorgeous golden hour selfie after of how beautiful their skin looks and then they tell you that it only took them two weeks and they used stuff that was in their kitchen cabinet, like, Relax. Another thing that's important to know is to understand what's causing your hyperpigmentation. Is it acne? Is it um, some sort of fabric that's rubbing up against your skin that's irritating your skin? Is it an allergic reaction to something else that caused, you know, a rash that caused the hyperpigmentation? You want to be able to figure out what the source of the hyperpigmentation is because otherwise you'll wind up on a hamster wheel. Another thing, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation um, is easier to treat at home when the spots are newer. The older your spots are, the harder it is to treat them at home, and that's when a pro like an esthetician or a dermatologist, in some cases you might need to see both, um, come in handy. And I have a video on how to find one linked above and below. So the first step in your routine is cleansing. Now, you want to make sure that you're using a gentle cleanser, something that's not going to strip your skin. Your skin should not feel squeaky clean. It shouldn't feel super tight or dry after you cleanse. If it does, chances are you're using the wrong type of cleanser, right? Some people use cleansers that have actives in them and that's fine, um, but just be conscious of certain times of the year where you may need to alternate use. Um, for instance, as it gets colder and drier out, sometimes those cleansers that have the actives in them can be extra drying on skin that's already feeling dry from the environment. So in that instance, you might want to alternate it with a gentle cleanser. Now, during the day, some people can get away with not doing a cleanse in the morning. I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, and then in the evening, you may want to consider doing a double cleanse, um, especially if you're someone who wears makeup or if you're wearing heavier sunscreens. Now, if you want more on cleansing, there's a video all about cleansing linked above and below. Now, as we're going through these steps, it's very important that you are choosing products that are not going to be irritating to your skin. So a lot of times you're not gonna know unless you try it. So anytime you're trying anything new, do a patch test instead of just throwing it on your face and then <laughs> hoping and wishing for the best. Now, the next step, toner. And not everyone's gonna need a toner in their routine and toners come in many forms. There's hydrating toners, there's astringent toners, and then there's the exfoliating toner. If you have drier skin, a hydrating toner might be really beneficial in your routine. When you have dry skin, you wanna make sure that you keep your skin hydrated and moisturized as much as possible because that dryness can lead to irritation, can make your skin feel a bit more sensitive, and then that sensitivity can lead to reactions that can cause hyperpigmentation. Be careful when you're using drying toners. I know it's very, very, very tempting when you have oily skin, but I, one of my philosophies with oily skin, I have oily skin, is to, you know, balance, not obliterate. You don't want to do the most in getting rid of the oils because that can lead to issues as well, which I have explained in a video that I will link above and below. Exfoliating toners are amazing. There's so many different types of ingredients for different types of skin and, and skin preference. References, uh, but it's super important if you're new to using a certain active to always go with the most gentle form first and then work your way up. Routine exfoliation is also super important in every skincare routine, but especially when it comes to hyperpigmentation. Exfoliation helps to rid the skin of dead skin cells. Now, a lot of these exfoliating toners say to use daily, day and night, some of them. Now, if you've already been on an exfoliating toner and you've been using it that often and you have no issues, you're good, you're Gucci. Perhaps. <laughs> if you notice any kind of stinging or anything different, you might want to decrease how often you use those. Now, but if you're just starting out, I wouldn't use an exfoliating toner more than two to three times a week. I, in my own personal routine, I don't use an exfoliating toner more than two to three times a week because I just like to be, you know, take it easy. Now, the next step is the essence slash serum routine. Now, you don't need either one in your routine and you don't need both. But if you're going to use both, your essence goes first and then your serum goes on after that. Now, an essence is sort of a hybrid between a toner and a serum. Typically, essences have lots of hydrating ingredients in them. So again, if you're someone with dry skin or if it's, you know, the winter time and it's kind of cold and dry there, you might want to look into one. It's not a thousand percent necessary, but for some skincare,
skincare routines, it can be beneficial. And essences are said to make serums perform even better. Now, serum is a wide array of products. You would choose a serum based on what your skincare needs are. And typically, serum is where some people like to have their actives that are gonna help with hyperpigmentation. Now, I have a video on actives for hyperpigmentation, so make sure you check that out. It's a collab that I did with Dr. Alexis Stevens. I'll link it above and below. Now again, every part of your routine has to be carefully thought out because you don't want to have unnecessary irritation in your routine that can lead to issues that can lead to hyperpigmentation. Your moisturizer is probably going to be the product in your routine that may change throughout the seasons if you live somewhere that has distinct seasons. So as we're going into the colder months, I'm going to use something that's a little bit more hydrating, some typically something that's a little bit thicker in consistency, but you can still have a nice hydrating, moisturizing cream for oily skin that does everything that it needs to do that doesn't feel heavy on the skin. And when it comes to dry skin, some people with dry skin layer moisturizers as well. So they may use something that's more of like a gel cream on first to hydrate, and then they might use something that's more, a thicker, more occlusive moisturizer on top. The moral of the story here though, is to make sure that you are using a moisturizer and that you're using the proper moisturizer for your skin. And if you want more information, I have some blog posts and some videos linked in the description box. Now, face oils aren't necessary in every routine, but if you're going to use one, typically your face oil is gonna go after to your moisturizer, but for some skin types, they find that it's more beneficial if they do it the other way around, the oil and then the moisturizer. Um, so, you know, the choice is yours, see what works for your skin. And then the last but most important step in your skincare routine during the day is your sunscreen. Now, if you think <laughs> that we done went through all of these steps in this routine, being so careful to make sure that we're not using something that's too harsh and irritating on the skin, to go outside without sunscreen on, you lost your mind. Sunscreen usage daily, whether it is winter, whether it is summer, whether it is cloudy, whether it is raining, whatever. You need to wear your sunscreen because sun exposure can worsen pigmentation. Now, whether you use a physical or a chemical sunscreen is going to depend on a number of things, and I've got lots of videos on that as well. But if you have a persistent pigmentation issue like melasma or aggressive hyperpigmentation, not only are we worrying about UV, but we're also worrying about visible light when you have pigmentation. You wanna be extremely careful and very particular when it comes to your sunscreen. Um, a recent study has shown that mineral sunscreens that are tinted, that have iron oxides, um, work really, really well for those with persistent pigmentation issues. I have lots of videos on it, so I will link them above and below. Make sure you check it out. That in a nutshell is your basics on hyperpigmentation. It's all holistic in the routine. Follow me on social, links will be in the description box, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.